Hi everyone, Greg here. Today in this video we're going to look at which formation to choose. So I'm, I'm considering one of three formations for my teams at school and at club. And we're actually going to look at one, just going to look at the 4 triple two, and in two future videos I'm going to make the 4 three, three, and the 3-2-3-2. Three, two, three, two. I'm personally probably going to choose between the top or the bottom one. So we're going to start with the 4 triple two. Look at its advantages and disadvantages, how we outlet the ball and how we press the ball. Okay, so this is the four triple two. So we have the four wing backs. I've just realized my left and right ran the wrong way. <laughs> They're right here, so that's probably going to happen the, the entire video. So please ignore that. We have the two link players. I like to call them links because that means they're defensive and offensive. Some people call them screens. I think in this country, in England, it's more popular to call them that. I just think that sounds really defensive, so I don't like it. We have the centre halves, uh, they're far more attacking centre mind players, and then the two centre forwards. I've got them slightly offset, you can line them up in lines, it really doesn't matter. Um, the 4 3 3. So, again, back four, three central players, but this time three forwards. If I'm playing a 4 3 3, personally, I prefer to stack my forwards and then creating a similar setup really to the four triple two and having the wing backs as the only natural um, wide players so we keep the ball sent we keep the defenders in centrally and we look to play out or the three two three two which has a back three which is the main difference two link players but then there's there's the three centers if you like rather than the two so the one defender from the four triple two is higher which has its benefits and weaknesses. So we'll have a look at the four triple two, and then in a future video we'll look at this one. Okay, so let's look at outletting. So I've set up the defensive teams, the black circles, and they are adopting a four three three formation, simple arrowhead press. So they've got this player here um, responsible for this player and and this player essentially. They've got the other forwards sent. You know, taking the role of uh, putting pressure on the wing backs if should the ball come to them, and they're also stopping a. Uh, well, actually, to be honest, the way it's set up now, that ball's pretty easy to play, so maybe they were tucking a little bit more. But yeah, where are the links? So it's important the links go behind the lines of the first defence and in front of the other one, so in this gap, and these can be moving left and right, left and right, shuffling around and looking to receive a ball from one of these centre backs. Because look what we have. We have this numerical advantage and this is the main benefit of the four triple two. You have an extra player in the middle. So you can see its advantage. For that reason, we want to be playing the ball into these players. So it doesn't have to be directly from the 16. It can be, but it could transfer here and then go in or it could come here and then come back and then go in. You might want to put it to your wing backs. We're going to talk on the next slide about why that's not a greatest idea with this formation. And we want to be playing it in to these link players every single time. We've also got um, overhead options, and that depends on what players you have in your team. But this formation works really well if you don't have the ability to throw overheads. Right, so let's have a chat about what it might look like. So we want it to come in and then it can come out, okay? So by doing that, we've actually broken this first line of defense. So as soon as it comes into a link player, so as soon as it starts moving, you expect this wing back, the right wing back, to promote, okay? That's really important, otherwise there's no point hanging back here. They'll have to just bounce it back out and then around and we need you to do your job. Or they can keep it in here and just take the numerical advantage. Perhaps in load of rondos in training, four versus three, or you know, five versus three, if you want to start off with that, you'll get really good at keeping possession and making quick decisions. Then we've got to always be thinking about counter defense. So if promoting the right wing back, not the left, as it says, then the other three will come across for counter defense. Okay, so that's one reason I do like a back four. It's easy to promote. With a back three, it's certainly more difficult to demote and solid up your defense. So that's why I like the back four. 
Okay, so let's talk about if we played it into the wide players. This is not a good decision because playing into a wide player is easily pressed. For example, the two forwards can put pressure on the ball and stop the pass back. We can see we're not trapping this player back here. This player is free to do whatever. So this player, if it was me, I'd be like, right guys, I'm off the balls on this side. I'm promoting myself. I'd be right up here putting pressure on the player. And then these other two central players could easily, you know, put in step in front of ours. This is a really bad situation for us. If we were to throw an aerial, a nice early aerial, if we have that in the locker, that's great. But we have to do it onto a lead. Otherwise, it's the defensive's advantage. But we certainly get the ball out of that area, so that might not be a bad thing. But we're essentially giving the ball away. Um, just if we do that, just remember the centre forward, you have to give them five metres from when they've controlled it, not when they first touched it. Otherwise, you're going to commit a foul. Right, so that's not a good situation. But how else would we get out of it? We don't have an overhead. We'll just do the counter defence, but more. Yeah, so we've got an option back. And then we've got a 2 beat one here, which we can work our way out of. Or a three versus two. We can try and evade this first line. Right. Um, what about if they're narrow? So if they're narrow, we still want to do it. We still want to play in to evade the first line. But if this is on, if the first one is on, so they don't have time to like press, or this person hasn't promoted, if the ball does, like they do two passes to get to here or one, just remember we still have this numerical advantage. If this space is on. Take it. Always take the space. And then look to create some sort of 3 beat 2 to here with these two link, the link player, the centre half, or maybe even the centre forward. But it's unlikely. It just means that you might be easier to transfer the ball and look to get into the links. So we still want to pass into the links and then evading the first line of defence. What about if they have a really aggressive pass, like a man to man, player to player mark? Even these players could be pushing up on the centre halves. Well, if they do that, just remember, don't stress, there's space. There's lots of space on the pitch. We've just got to find it. Again, if you have the overheads, if they're all pressing in, we can promote our wing backs and just chuck it into the space. Easy. If you don't have that in your locker, your centre halves might be looking to post up, putting a bit of chaos in this player's mind. Which two players do I, which one of these two do I go for? And that's easier if this player isn't being player marked. Um, but again, whether it goes into that player or not, we need these players to be really strong on the receiving the ball of, of, of the player, receiving of the ball. So no open receives, body in front, close receive, first time deflection out wide to the promoting player. Remember, if it goes in, you must promote. Um, or yeah, you might have to take a touch and then at your feet and then move the ball on. So it could be either of these two. So then once we beat this first line, we're then attacking with seven again. Okay, so a slightly different press now. We have the 3-2-3-2 three, two, three, two press. You can see these two little diamonds. Again, we've still got the advantage. So we want to go into the link players. We want to go into the link, keep it in the middle, go into the links, and then put it out wide to avoid the first line. You could argue though, that these players could tuck in and then they have the advantage, which is right. So right now, we have a safer, easy transfer. But that's why these players have to push up. If you don't ask questions of this player, they can tuck in, we'll, we'll get turnover all the time. Or you hang back, and then we try and exploit the space, have a three versus two down here. That's another option. But if you do promote this player, We'll probably come across and then we've definitely got the overload so we keep it in the middle and just go forwards okay so just you have to be intelligent and think about the situation you're facing and hopefully your coach is on the side helping you as well all right so let's look at movement off the ball so let's talk about it coming into a link and we have the promoting wing back and we're there we've beaten the first line so how would we expect the other players to move well Something like this, I would expect. So the centre halves, I would expect you to be running the line. Why not the centre forward? Because I want them in the circle. So when they get the ball, they can score. If we our players aren't in the circle, that's not helpful. The, the right link, I would expect you to either stay square or maybe drop just beyond square. So we've got a square option. 
got an in option, we've got a line option. There might be a center forward posting up here, just, just a slight post up into space. And so that might be on. Or you two could do something a bit more elaborate and swap over. But again, counter defense mode. So here's the elaborate swap. Okay, so we've got a post up here into the same position. You're just creating a bit more chaos, mixing it up. Okay, so that's a pretty strong position. You could say the left link could come over here a bit more. That's good. Um, another option, so if it comes in here, is instead of promoting just the one wing back, you could promote two wing backs. So we still have the same move. We still have that same move, but you could look to prom demote this player and promote the wing back. So this is, you have to be talking, you have to be experienced in this. But why would you do this? Um, and the simple reason is it's different. If this player is always expecting you to like chill out here, he might follow you. This person might then be able to run into space. We might have a pass onto here. Or this player could then come a lot higher. So when we do move the ball down the lines, we've got an extra player and this player's been dragged out of here. Just doing things different creates chaos. Yeah, there's that move again. <laughs> Um, so what about if we have the ball high up in the pitch? So you can see the wing backs are really promoted high, asking loads of questions. So what does the defence do here? Does the defence mark the central with all their players, or they try and mark the whole pitch? So if they try and mark the whole pitch, there's space in the middle. If they keep all their players nice and tight, then there's space on the wings. So you have to look out for that. If you're one of these players, is, and all of the players really, is you're making those decisions. But you've got these six central players really asking questions. Other option, instead of this, if you want to be a little bit more cautious, you could demote, go to a back three. Still five players here. We're still attacking with seven. And if it goes here, obviously this player will come in and we'll look to just get an outcome in the D or even better, a shot off on goal. Right. Um, let's talk about pressing. So here's the basic shape. It's not really changed too much. We still have the four triple two set up. I've decided here the center forwards are going to be slightly offset. So this one's probably just below the 25 or the 23, depending on what you call it. This one is putting a little bit of doubt in the transfer, but certainly stopping this dangerous ball here being hit flat. We've got this open. This is actually a false space. We're going to talk about this. I probably wouldn't line you up directly behind because one ball can you just you'll be blind to it so it's i wouldn't no one's really going to stand in the shadow of a player so i'll always be offset from the shadow of this center forward if you imagine this is a torch here's the player there'd be the shadow um if you go in that's not a good decision so always be out because then you're protecting this ball here and yeah, so we've got the six. We've still got this numerical advantage in the middle. But what haven't we got? We're not really putting any pressure on here at this moment in time. But look, they've got a 4-3-3 three, three set up. We could promote this player or this one. So depending on what happens, if the ball comes here, we can with confidence promote a player. So all I've done there is just move them slightly higher. Just put a bit more doubt on here. So let's talk about the options. So they're probably going to go here. Well, that's one option, right? This is great for us because the def the sideline is our friend. It's like an extra player. This is what we want to happen. This is where we're going to win the ball. So how are we going to do it? So centre forward, know your roles. Okay, everyone, really important, you know your individual role. You're probably going to play the same position all the season, so just learn it. Centre forward, side pressure, not allowing the pass back. Centre half, big pressure, front pressure on the ball. The right or the left wing back, we spoke about before, you can promote. There's no danger. And our counter defense mentality, the others coming over, just play a mark back three. Obviously, we can't leave this, so we're going to promote two players. The center forward, get on the help side. Okay, we're pressing this side. Let's get on the help side, get ready for something to come your way. And even the this yellow player, you can come across a little bit more. Oh, I do do it. Good. So we are in a really strong position to give this person a horrid day and win the ball back. So we want it to go out wide. 
Well, what about if they don't? What about if they take our false space? And this is potentially even more exciting as a press. This is what I would love them to do and would just torment them. Okay, so the ball comes in. So there's two centre-halves, two attacking-minded midfielders, if you like. You're pressing. You're both putting pressure on the ball. You can see the yellows. It's just crying out for them to take those players. So front mark. The centre forwards, stop it going wide, so stop that ball, so that they, they, their head's down, they're not going to be looking too much, we've got two players not committing a foul, that's really important, just putting their head down, and hopefully what they'll do is just pass it back. If your stick's not down, if you're not freaking this player out, they might try and turn you, and then we could be in trouble. Um, but also, because we've got back four, you could even promote one of these into this area, um, and you're perfectly fine to do that, because we've still got player to player ratio right so this is what's probably going to happen and look what they did as soon as it's passed back we go into a super mega high press so the two center forwards cut out the transfers the center half pressure on the ball no foul there's no options okay there is no options apart from a huge overhead over here but the pressure on this player getting close means he can't do it so don't commit a foul force a dodgy pass and uh, let's see what we can, what outcomes we can get. This is a slightly different setup. It just means we're protecting this option a bit more. That's really risky now because it's on the ball to goal line. Uh, right, so it's on the forehand of this player, so it's unlikely to happen. Also, as they go to shape up for it, this player can step across a bit. So that's not really an option. That's a bit risky as well because this player's really pushed on high. We're Pretty much saying your only options here, and then we'll press it in here. Okay, and again, if it goes back, just put super mega high pressure on. Um, if there's a back three, I personally prefer this. You could just completely do a split press, cut that out. I prefer this, I'd like it to go left and right because then we can press the corners and use the sideline as an extra player for us. Um, so it's an option. The reason I have cut this off, because now they have two players in here, it's a little bit more complex about pressuring them. So, But if it did come through, you've got one put, player putting pressure, another player covering, or the two players here putting pressure on this one, this person covering. You can see it, but it's way more likely they're going to put it out wide, and then we just do the normal press to stop. This player, did you have any duty? Let's have a look. No, so you could easily be here. You could already be next to this player. So when it comes across, oh, wrong button. When it comes across, you could easily get into that position. You don't have to start from the deep position I had you starting from. Again, front pressure. The This centre forward, you're probably going to take this player now. And the other centre forward is in a better position to stop the transfer. Everyone comes on the help side. Even the back three could come across and just leave this player here to deal with them if it goes there but everyone on the help side and um, let's press and win the ball so i hope you like the four triple two i hope this you're watching this and think yeah we want to give this a go and if so let's do it okay any questions please do ask leave any comments below and i will do my best to answer them